Hi everyone, this is Pradeep from Sydney, once again talking to you in a lockdown. We continue to be in a lockdown and are averaging about 1000 cases a day in Sydney alone. But that is the new normal and New South Wales, the state in which I live, they have very much decided that this is going to be way of life and the focus is going to be only on vaccinations. But that is the new normal and we've got much more interesting things to talk about today. So I am delighted to welcome you to GCC episode 10. What was going to be as we kick started GCC again in July this year, we started with the individual people. We started with IIT Delhi alumni talking about the journey post IIT. Then we started looking at different countries and we have sessions from Singapore, Canada, UK. Then it was time to look at different batches. So we had a look at 1967 batch which was the second batch from IIT Delhi. And we had some glorious people talking to us. And there is going to be another part two of batch 1967. Then we said, let's move on to hostels. And I could only remember one hostel which made any sense. And that was Kailash during my time. I was not aware of Himadri or anything else. So I said, why don't we start with Kailash? Now, I know only a few people from Kailash who are close to my batch or somewhere or other we may have professionally connected with each other. So as usual I reached out to somebody else and that somebody else happens to be Anshal. Anshal from California from Orange County in California a lovely place very close to the beach and a very very scenic place. I have actually been to Orange County also, although at that time I did not know Anshal. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause to Anshal. And also to a couple of other girls from the US West Coast because they have got up at 6 a.m. in the morning for this session. So, a big round of applause to Anshal for organizing the session as well as to all the girls in particular, the West Coast girls for getting up so early in the morning. And I call them girls. Why? Because most of the girls that we are presenting today, they come from the batch from you know, typically in 1999 to 2002. And possibly they were not even born or maybe toddlers when I finished my B.Tech from IIT Delhi in 1977. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me go across to Anshul. Anshul, are you there? I know you yes, are there. I'm here. <laughs> so you can't hide. So what Anshul has effectively done is she has transferred her trust to me and to Jesus. I did not know the girls. I knew Anshul. Anshul knew the girls. And that's how we are talking to these girls today. And incidentally, as I circulated today, I came across a video of Kailash of 2016, which I was amazed had got 18 million views. And of course, the question came to my mind that I must ask my batchmates also that was it like this when they were in Kailash? But more about that later. So first of all, Anshul is 2001 BTEC from IIT Delhi. I know that she has done her MBA from UCLA. I also know that she was one of those, one of those people who got airlifted from BTEC IIT Delhi to Deloitte in the US. Oh man, so this girl has been post IIT, her life has been shaped living in the US. So. Anshul, we would like to hear about what did you do and I know that you are also very much part of GCC last year but we've got a 
quite a new team now as we keep on expanding GCC. So can you tell us a bit about your journey post IIT Delhi as well as introduce the lovely girls from 1999 to 2002. So over to you Ansu and once again a big round of applause. Guys, I don't see your hands moving. Come on. Yes, yes. over to you Ansu. Thanks Pradeep. Um, and you're right. This is, I, I, you know, it's 6 a.m. over here. This, um, it looks like it's right midnight, completely dark outside. So again, uh, kudos to everybody who's been able to join. But also, having been part of GCC for one year, I realized that this is one session that works across multiple time zones. And typically, we have people from six to seven time zones here. It's, it's kind of amazing how much, uh, you know, traction we have on this group. So that's been amazing. So in terms of my journey after I came, it was, as you said, airlifted from <laughs> IIT directly to Orange County. I've been here, based out of here for 21 years. Um, I actually uh, started uh, with a job with Deloitte, which was my on-campus job that I kept till about five months back. And during that job, as te typically technology consulting goes, I was traveling pretty much every week, uh, five days a week, uh, out of the out of the house, living outside a hotel, traveling across different states in the U.S., sometimes outside, uh, you know, working with clients. And um, one of the things that I did during that time was uh, looked up whoever I was um, from IIT that I knew who was in the uh, area that I was posted in. So I met with quite a few people from my batch as well as a couple of other batches during that time, and even before the days of LinkedIn and Facebook, you know, when all we had was basically uh, cell phones uh, and emails, uh, we, you know, we were able to keep in touch. Um, so now, of course, it's much easier with WhatsApp, Zoom, even during COVID days, we are able to keep that sense of community. Um, so that's how essentially I've been pretty much in touch with a lot of my batch mates as well as, as, well as with Kelashites in general. Um, and um, on the professional front, uh, for the first 10 years, I was essentially traveling, doing large scale tech transformation projects for Deloitte. Um, and then I had decided to have a family and I didn't want to continue with that lifestyle anymore. And that's when I decided to kind of take a little bit of a step back in my career uh, and went into doing more business development and operations roles for Deloitte for another seven, eight years. And then about five months back, I was like, okay, I need a little bit of a change in my life. 20 years has been a long time. So I reached out uh, um, again into my network. And then I recently started as a senior director in product development in data analytics uh, at Experian um, Data Services. So that's been my uh, journey since uh, I graduated. And today I have uh, over here- So before uh, you introduce the other people, one or two questions for you. Well, there was also extra sensory perception available at your time. It was not just mobile phones. So, but on another front, um, you see, what kind of amazes me is that you have been practically for most of the time with Deloitte. And at this particular point in time, you reached out to your network when you thought that you were looking for new challenges. So the question for you is that what is the value proposition you think should be there for you from GCC? Is it just an emotional connect about nostalgia? Is it about professional networking? Whether it be for your own, you know, for your career, whether it is a job or in, as an entrepreneur or the business or education? Is it for social networking? Is it for give back? Or is it of passion or some cause that is it, or would attract you to? So what is the value proposition that you're looking for from, or what do you think you would expect from GCC? That's a great question, uh, Pradeep. Uh, when you first involved me with the GCC last year, the way you positioned it to me 
and which appealed to me the most was the emotional connect, to be honest with you. I think the prospect of, you know, and it was laid out in a very simple, in very simple terms, you know, you're basically building a community and you're using the approach of going by batches. And it made perfect sense to me because like, oh yeah, I already know people in my batch. I, you know, we, we keep in touch. So it's a no brainer, right? Of course I can help with this. So I think the sense of emotional connect was how it started for me. But as I got more involved, I realized that there was more value. There was a greater value proposition here, which could be in many different directions. And that was essentially left open-ended for me at that point. And clearly one of the areas which I did uh, leverage when I was doing my job search also was the um, networking piece. And it just happened organically uh, to be in touch with so many people from so many different countries through GCC as well as through the spin-off initiatives that, uh, you know, uh, like Iron Square and things like that. So clearly networking is a big part of it, but I'd still say for me, the main thing that kind of got me involved and excited about it um, was the emotional connect. Then, and with the possibility of spinning off into special interest groups or networking and what have you, and which I've, I think, essentially leveraged over the past year. Absolutely, I love the feedback that you're giving. And I keep reminding people that today in the session also, we've got some lovely guys from 1967, the second batch from IIT Delhi. And in one of the future sessions, I'm going to present to you at 19, oh sorry, not, not 19, why do I keep saying 19, it is 20 now, 2020. I'm going to present to you a graduate from 2020 also, and I'm going to get the same person in the same time with 1967. And you girls happen to be somewhere in between, you know. So, fabulous, now over to you to introduce everybody. Absolutely. So when Pradeep asked me that he wanted to do this session on Kailash, I was like, okay, you know, this is this is simple. And then I started reaching out to my batchmates and incidentally just happened uh, that, you know, I uh, when I kind of started reaching out to my network, that um, I was in touch with uh, people from different batches. And so now we today, by coincidence, mostly we have four different batches, all of which were together in Kailash at the same time from 99 to 2002. So starting uh, in the order in which we graduated, I'll start with Aditi. Uh, Aditi and I um, essentially go back a long way. Aditi uh, graduated from IIT in computer science in 99, but we go back all the way to middle school. Um, and we were talking about the, as let's say, from middle school, we went to IIT together. From IIT, we went to Deloitte together. So she was also in Deloitte for almost, uh, actually, probably more than uh, 20 years. And our paths uh, were similar in the sense that she came, you know, started off also in the technology consulting phase, I believe primarily in healthcare, delivering high-tech projects. And then she went on to do quite a few internal leadership roles. One of it was, I know, was chief of staff for the COO, current COO of uh, Deloitte Consulting. Um, so she uh, is now again uh, um, moved on from Deloitte uh, to AWS, uh, where she's a go-to market leader for their Windows uh, platforms uh, modernization services. Um, so again, very excited to have you here, Aditi. Um, you know, um, it's uh, there's so many similarities in our path, but also so many differences, and it's uh, essentially lovely to catch up with you again. Um, moving on that. Yeah, thanks to... so much, Anchal. I was going to say, what, sorry, I was going to say when I do my journey part, I can basically say whatever Anchal said. <laughs> um, sorry, so, so I shouldn't similar. have stolen your thunder, Aditi, but I'm so very familiar with your career path that I couldn't help it. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, awesome. it's, uh, it's, um, it's amazing to catch up with you again, Aditi, after all these years. Um, moving nice, on nice. to Ranjita. Uh, now, Ranjita is, uh, was one year my senior. She was initially in textiles and then moved over to computer science. Uh, and again, uh, it's uh, Ranjita's uh, journey has been completely different. And, um, you know, after doing jobs with Microsoft um, and a uh, couple of other places, she is now the entrepreneur and founder of uh, not one, but two startups, um, Park Circle Technologies and Best View Reviews. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm always amazed when I see, you know, women uh, from our badge, as, you know, or as well as from Kesh Kailash kind of going that startup founder route, because personally, that's very exciting and intriguing for me. 
So again, uh, lovely to hear your uh, journey on this group as well as outside uh, Ranjita. One fun fact about Ranjita is she was the music secretary uh, at Kailash, um, uh, or actually in uh, I, uh, IIT Delhi. Um, so uh, that I have very, I was telling her very fond memories of the time uh, when both of us used to kind of prepare for music competitions and she used to, you know, line us all up first, line up all of us um, and take us to uh, the different hostels for participating in music competitions. And some of that interest has still stayed uh, even now, 20 years later. Uh, so again, thanks Ranjita for coming on, on today for this call. Uh, uh, moving on to my own batch, uh, you know, Harpreet. Uh, Harpreet and I go back. We are from the same batch. Uh, she was uh, doing electrical engineering in IIT when I was doing chemical engineering. Uh, she was the house secretary of Kailash at the time I was cultural secretary. So again, we uh, both have, uh, you know, a lot of camaraderie from the days because he was part of the, uh, you know, the social uh, committee, um, the, the core committee in uh, Kailash uh, during those days. And um, Harpreet and I uh, kind of worked together on launching a publication for uh, Kailash during the time, I, if I remember correctly, and a lot of other initiatives during the time. And she was one of the most sought after people in Kailash at the time. And she's obviously moved on to do uh, many more important things, uh, which I could have seen uh, knowing her back in the day. Uh, she is now um, based in Singapore and she's a vice president of Asia Pacific Strategy and Operations at Bain and Company. So, uh, you know, she went the consulting route as well and obviously did many, uh, you know, uh, uh, great, uh, have great achievements since then. So, uh, again, very nice to reconnect with you, Harpreet. Um, and uh, thanks for coming on. Thank and you. last, and last but not the least, uh, I have Shobna, um, who is uh, was one year my junior uh, in uh, you know from the two thousand two batch, who did civil engineering, and I think out of all the four of us, Shobna has had the most breadth of job experiences, which I'm sure she's going to talk about, uh, you know, when, when, when uh, she has the one-on-one -on -one with Pradeep. Uh, and she has actually gone, you know, from uh, uh, geotechnology to, uh, uh, to uh, corporate strategy development. Uh, it, you know, how seamlessly she has made the transition is amazing. Uh, again, very inspiring to have her on here and talking on the subject of uh, changing uh, jobs. She actually just started a new role. She was senior director at business operations at LinkedIn till about a couple of weeks back. Uh, and while we were talking to her, she was literally in the process of transitioning over and has taken over as the VP of strategy and ops at a healthcare startup in the Bay Area. So uh, good luck to you, Shobna. And again, thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, lovely to catch up with you again. So, Thank you, Anshul. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause and let's hurry up before Shobna decides to change her job within the next five minutes or something like that, you know. So, let me go from Orange County to Singapore. You see, I always feel more comfortable because Singapore is just seven to seven and a half hours flight from uh, Sydney. And in the good old days, the pre-pandemic days, I used to be in Singapore almost once a month, you know, maybe for a day or so speaking at conferences. And this is one place where I say that it is actually not part of Asia because everything works over there. So, ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause to Harpreet. Harpreet, how are you? It's I'm very well, Pradeep. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Very, very nice to be here. So, Harpreet, what have you been up to? I know that you went to I am Ahmedabad. I know, but I was I didn't know that you started your life as an electrical engineer. So, can you still design, you know, switchyards, substations, and things like that? Well, my props would insist I couldn't do it even then, so that's how old I'm going to tell you. <laughs> but uh, uh, it hasn't stopped my my parents from asking me to repair stuff in the house. But uh, okay. no, I, I did. I I um, I left electrical engineering uh, engineering in general after after IIT. So I went to work in in Bangalore. I worked with Webtech, which was Dresna Bank's. Um, software uh, setup in, in Bangalore, did that for a couple of years, 
then uh, on a whim essentially said why don't i take cat this seems that seems like a good idea did that ended up in amdabad did that for two years thought i will do consulting for two years um and join bain uh, but here i am 16 years later still with bain company across different roles across different geographies uh, and and still working with them now in singapore yeah so one question which comes to my mind is that now that you've been with bain for so long so what do you do normally in customer meetings you kind of just sit and pretend to be very knowledgeable and just keep on like you know like <laughs> I think IIT prepares you well for that. Um, <laughs> jokes aside, uh, now I uh, my mo- current role, my most recent role is actually um, like Anshul said, APAC strategy and ops, which actually I did not realize it's very similar to what Aditi's role was as a chief of staff. So I'm chief of staff for Asia Pacific. So deciding and figuring out um, what what we should be doing, how we should be doing as a company in in Asia Pacific. and what that means is for the priya question um, my customers are are internal my customers are cons- consultants for life so slightly more difficult to uh, trick them and do just nodding their oh, head and agree oh man so But, i i i don't do i don't i can't do that but no that's that's my current role so tell me that he has uh, you know a lot of you seem to be the chief of staff and all that so do you also wield the stick uh wielding the stick is a is a big term it's a it's a loaded term um if it means that do you have to say no absolutely a lot do you have to keep people um, make sure people are doing things that they're supposed to be doing absolutely yes so yes keeping things and especially actually all of us in our roles would, would recognize that keeping the ship steady uh, in the last 18 and a half month 18 and a half 18 months is is a challenge in itself and so wielding the stick to make sure that that happens the ship stays steady and and um the lights are still on that yes that's Fab- fabulous now if you had the opportunity to relive your life would you have liked it in any other different way would i have uh, sorry sir are would i have would you have liked, liked to live a different life I still have preferred to be with Bain and gone down the IM and yeah. IITD uh, path. Yeah, I, I, I personally I don't think too much about that. I do believe very strongly in live, making the best of what you have, what you do, what you do right now, enjoying that and doing the, <laughs> that to your best ability. So I don't think too much about going back and redoing stuff. That's what a it. what a fabulous answer! I just love it. You know, I couldn't care to hoots about you know what happens. Huh? And let me enjoy the current. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. I, yeah, that's not me. I, I do think though, uh, Pradeep, since you asked the question, and I, I was it it sparked a thought in my head. Um, if I was to go back and do something differently, <laughs> since I did a yoga class today and and. failed miserably i would have learned yoga a lot sooner in life <laughs> and not have been failing miserably in doing headstands at, at this age but yeah that's probably the only thing so i see a lot of paintings behind you uh, well um I, I, i'm not sure whether you have drawn them or not or do you have any interest in art or or painting or is it just kind of a... yeah uh so these these are photographs um actually a photo of the oh photo. man i must get my numbers uh, checked i must get my uh, now this, this is all internet data quality you can blame that um no this are these are all photographs um done by people i know uh, friends of mine etc um i i i, <laughs> I tried learning la i tried learning photography i'm not very good at it i do appreciate it as a result because i i now recognize how difficult it is so i do appreciate it i and that's my extent of uh being involved in arts directly i appreciate good art good photography and i don't think i can ever do this well but i appreciate when i see good art that's that lovely now another question for you is that you see this is your introduction to gcc what value proposition would you really find appealing for an ongoing engagement with gcc would it be just the emotional connect would it be a professional networking 
would it be some social you know networking or would it be some give back or would it be some passion or a cause or something like that or could it be something else yeah um i i think if i may so this is my my first time joining one of these um meetings so i'm coming very much from from the outside i i think two two things um uh, sorry one is mentoring and i do believe like mentoring not just me mentoring people but i would love to be mentored by the giants that have, who have come before me and are doing great things in life so it's it's both ways up down left right um i i think mentoring is is quite important uh, as a as a ongoing uh, obviously much smaller group there for uh, engagement and the second is is uh, what answer also called special interest groups so there are transversal themes uh, that are quite relevant in all of our lives and especially uh, professional lives like esg like dei which i think can cut across industries cut across uh, tenure seniority all of that which could be quite interesting i think that would something that would definitely be something that i would uh, want to participate more in the sure, yeah. show well, what i'm loving about the discussion is your lateral thinking you know how you know you are taking you know just as an example you took mentoring up and down left and right kind of a thing but also to respond to your uh, this thing is that absolutely see what at a strategic level gcc starts off at one layer at the foundation layer with the emotional connect the second layer on top of that is really when you start going into the value proposition although it the value, actual value proposition will come at the third layer kind of a thing and to give you an example you mentioned esg that one of the special interest groups which has come out of you know gcc is actually what we are calling as in square inclusive innovation the new normal with strong focuses on certain elements including esg in fact mm. you know anshul uh myself and there are a couple of other uh, it delhi people also involved into that and it's it's spinning off into a whole lot of different directions you know and i and, and i'm going to get you more involved into that so um look all through your life with bain have you been based in singapore only no i in fact uh, started in london after business school i spent a uh, little over a year 15 16 months in in london then uh, moved to delhi when uh, bain opened the delhi office so i was one of the first few people uh, with bain in in delhi uh, spent about four four five years in four and a half years in delhi but i have been in singapore for the last uh, 11 11 years now and okay. uh, this is this is the longest i've lived in a city other than uh, the city i was born in so yeah and a typical consultant's life you know is that you start off on monday morning 7 o'clock you catch a flight you know in the first couple of years you are never posted in your home uh, city i mean you are given assignments which are outside the home city thursday night is when you return back and this is for in country assignments and friday is when you catch up with you know, supposedly in submitting your bills and so on and so forth kind of a thing and when it comes to uh, out of country clear close by country the typical time span is you know once in six months or uh, six weeks that you come back you know it could vary slightly from organization to organization so did you also do your bit of traveling all over uh yes i've done my religious <laughs> commissions on the front yes uh when i was in in delhi i uh, you said 7 am the 650 flight jet airways flight from delhi to bombay that was the consultant flight <laughs> <laughs> so the 650 that's that's the one we would take every monday morning um and and back thursday evening so uh, i've done that i've done the and when i was in singapore when i just moved here uh one week in new york three weeks in singapore uh, that stint also yes <laughs> so i have i have paid my dues uh to the sector <laughs> it has been absolutely wonderful to have this chat with you i have thoroughly enjoyed myself and i'm sure that everybody else has thoroughly enjoyed please give a big round of applause to harpreet and to each of the participants who are speaking today girls this is just the first encounter 
as I will, you know, be in touch with you after uh, today's session in the next couple of weeks and ask each of you to build a community around yourself in what your passion area is and also to get you more involved into other areas. So please give a big round of applause to Harpreet as we now move along the time zone and we go from Singapore to the US West East Coast sorry and we go across to New York or New Jersey depending on which part of the, which time of the day it is if it is you know well anyway today is Saturday unless Ranjita also works on Saturday no no but she you know maybe is very musical so maybe she's not working so she'll be at her home in New Jersey so please give a big round of applause to Ranjita Hi everyone, thank you so much. It's uh, really a pleasure meeting all of you. Sir so, Ranjitha, tell us, what have you been doing? I hear that you have been in jobs and now you are in an entrepreneurial journey. So when did you decide? Anyway, let's hear your story. Why should I tell you or ask you questions? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's, it's great to uh, see everyone here. I graduated from IIT Delhi in the year 2000. I came to US for my master's. I did my master's in computer science from Georgia Tech. And then I worked for a year uh, in Maryland uh, with a company called Merkle. Uh, I was a database developer there. And then I joined Microsoft. I uh, spent over a decade in Microsoft, so 10 plus years. Um, uh, and uh, uh, I actually was I like after first two years, I uh, worked out a flexible work arrangement with Microsoft uh, uh, because of my husband's, uh, you know, job. And I kind of moved around a lot with him. Uh, he, my husband is also an IT Delhi graduate, uh, same batch as mine, 2000. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, kind of uh, the joke, uh, you know, with my friends is they would always check with me, where am I? Because, you know, I, I kept moving around uh, in U.S. between East Coast and West Coast, Seattle, New Jersey. And then for a time uh, when my husband was posted in Mumbai, we also spent, you know, a couple of years in Mumbai and then back to Seattle and then back to New Jersey. So, you know, people always had to check with me, you know, which time zone was I in? So at um, this point, I have a question for you. So, yeah. <laughs> Like when you changed jobs, did your husband also change jobs and followed you? Or was it the other way around that when he changed jobs, then you also changed jobs and followed him? No, so in, so, a, in, a, in, other, in other words, the question is, who's, yeah. the bo who's the boss? Are you the boss? Or are you the boss? <laughs> so, so I think we, we, we both take the boss hats depending upon, you know, who, who needs it at yeah. that point of time, right? So uh -huh. we have followed each other depending upon uh, <laughs> the, the time of the day. But uh, I mean, there were kind of you know, the various uh, ways in which we have supported each other, both in, you know, education and career uh, life, right? So my husband and I both were at Microsoft for a point of time. And then he came to uh, New York University Stern School of Business for his MBA. And then he, you know, joined uh, Goldman Sachs in their investment banking division. I continued with Microsoft for, you know, a couple of years. And then I changed my job and I moved to Nordstrom and their marketing technology team in Seattle. And then I decided to go back to school. So I kind of, you know, um, I did a part-time executive uh, master's in technology management uh, from Columbia University. So that kind of, you know, um, around so, the same time he so moved. That's another uh, question. The... Another question. <laughs> yeah. they, they, don't you get fed up of studying only? I mean, you went to Georgia Tech also. And after Georgia Tech, you wanted to go to Columbia also. I mean, do you still want, yeah, to, so do a, I you want totally... to do a PhD also? <laughs> I totally believe in that learning is a, you know, lifelong thing, right? There, there's something or else you um, can keep learning from your peers, from your children, from, you know, going back to school. So actually going back to school after a long time was um, very, very refreshing. It was not a full-time program. It was a part-time program. So I was working and, you know, doing my master's, which obviously was a lot to handle. And my kids were also, uh, you know, uh, young at that time. But uh, kind of, uh, you know, learning from your cohort on what experiences they have had in their individual journeys and using that to mold your leadership style, to mold your technical skill set, everything was very, very refreshing. So, you know, another thing, you know, what I'm again liking is 
uh, see it's all such nice answers you know oh me and my husband are such a you know teamwork hunky dory and learning is such a lifelong activity man Ranjit so so i have to tell you it, it it's it's not that hunky dory you know we have gone through our own struggles uh, you know as well uh, anyways like you know i know my recent thing is you know uh, i i uh, was with audible and then i finally decided that i wanted to do something of my own and um, i uh, went the entrepreneur route and uh, i will tell you that uh, and and you know other entrepreneurs on the call will agree to that that uh, when you're working for yourself you land up working more than what you do uh, when cool. you are working in a job so uh, there are uh, you know uh days where you like i'm not sure why i'm doing this and there are days where you're like just so happy uh, being your own boss um so there are two two i could sides not i point. could not agree with more with you i am up till 4 o'clock in the morning not because of anything but what i'm involved very passionately what i'm doing and my wife is shouting away at me that go out to sleep go out to sleep and all and i tell her man leave me alone hmm. so i can understand but you see the other aspect that i want to pick up on is that you see i get the feeling that you know in the uh, on the present side of your story you know you have really been leveraging the network aspect you not try to build up a large organization but instead you look for networking across and with very different kind of a groups you know i think that's fabulous because that is the mantra in the brave new world so like what made you go down that particular path and also you know you got some focus on women and you're also working with other people who are you know focusing on to people with disabilities so what's this side of the story yeah so the company that i founded parkcircle technologies uh, you know obviously because of my background we are a minority and women owned business so we have focused uh, you know in uh, the government sector in us right so there are a lot of opportunities for small businesses for minority and women owned businesses to work on government contracts uh, there is uh, you know a set aside uh, you know federal government state government they encourage small businesses you know to to get the share of the spend that they are doing so we are focusing on uh, technology needs for different government organizations you know in past 3 years we have got great opportunities to work uh, you know in uh, federal sector for example with department of defense department of air force uh, you know several national guards uh, and other state uh, and local organizations we are focused on so to begin with you know these needs are uh, driven by the digitization of you know everything right uh, everybody is moving towards uh, moving from and in and in government area especially there are a lot of things that are still done on paper that they need moved uh, to but, but uh, I, technology I, i i just love this because what you've done is that at a strategy level you have positioned yourself where organizations are wanting to meet certain targets and have certain budgets now the question is that where did you learn this at iit delhi or georgia tech or at columbia So again I I would say this is all part of kind of what you learn on the way from your network right so uh you you meet a lot of people you see what they are doing and uh, you see that there is uh you know a big pie and even if you get like you know a little slice of it that's a big market share that you can uh, you know get so uh, we I would definitely say that I have leveraged my IIT Delhi network a lot since I have graduated um you know uh, as Anshul said uh, everywhere I go you know I kind of look up people who uh, I have known and you know especially with my uh, uh, kind of network from Georgia Tech from Columbia you know there's kind of a lot variety of people that I keep meeting and I learn from them in terms of you know what they're doing right I in my current uh, entrepreneur uh, world again i'm networking and partnering with other iit delhi uh, people so for uh, the resources that we you know leverage out of india you know we are partnering with another iit delhi graduate uh, from 2001 for the other um, you know initiative that uh, we have on the product side for best views reviews 
uh, you know, I'm again kind of leveraging the machine learning skill sets uh, of another IIT Delhi graduate, right? So these networks help and uh, I, I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy learning from them. And uh, especially in uh, my current world, both from perspective of, you know, where can we get more business from as well as from the perspective of, you know, where can we get good talent from? Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, IIT Delhi networks. So, Ranjita, that, that gets to the next question is that what value proposition you know, would attract you the most apart from the emotional connect or the nostalgia? Would it be professional networking? Would it I think, be... again, uh, it, it's it's a combination of both, right? Uh, there is always an emotional connect, you know, when uh, you meet people from your own alma mater, right? So uh, uh, it, it's just so nice to see the Kalashites on on the group uh, uh, bring back, bring, brings back memories uh you know your interactions from uh, old days as well as you know kind of uh, figuring out how you can leverage your network to both grow from a professional perspective as well as kind of you know from social perspective i mean i think now we are at a time that you know our kids are growing up we are looking for you know how they can leverage the network as well uh you know we are hiring talent in our team and you know we, we are kind of looking at other id graduates you know who you know, maybe have graduated two years or three years, uh, you know, uh, from, uh, you know, uh, who are two or three year graduates and are looking for opportunities. So it, it's, it's a combination of everything, right? So uh, these forums give us an opportunity to uh, network with a broader uh, group and, uh, so, you know, see how so we can help others and how you you know, are we the can get guidance from others. You are the perfect poster girl for IIT Delhi, you know. You know, you say IIT Delhi to the front of me, IIT Delhi to the back of me, IIT Delhi to the left of me, and IIT Delhi to the right of me. But jokes apart, one last question, and the question is: Do, do you see Indian Idol? Ah. Uh. Okay. Do you Not know, I, much. I mean, okay, my parents okay. that, see it that, a lot, and they keep telling me, you know, he is winning and she is winning. So, so <laughs> no. Like, why, why I asked this I question was that uh, I was also not particularly fond of seeing Indian Idol, but my wife was. But you know, after some time, as I say, you know, that you become two in one. You know, so you <laughs> or you have no choice. You know, you have to do what your wife is saying. You know, so I also started seeing Indian Idol. And there was this guy called Pawan who recently became the Indian Idol and this guy is just phenomenal, you know, I mean, he plays all the instruments they can think of and is also some absolutely fabulous speaker. And, and the question that comes to my mind is that uh, suppose you are there and you belong with your kids. Now, who plays the instrument and who sings? So both my kids uh, have been learning piano. So uh, I sing and they play. That's kind of, you know, our... <laughs> Uh, as Ashul said, I was the music secretary. I, I enjoy singing, but you know, after I graduated from IIT, I never kind of you know pursued it as a uh, you know anything professional. But like to sing uh, within friends groups, so that's that's the fun part. Ranjita, it was absolutely a delight interacting with you, and I'm also very very happy to you know talking to this group because I was at my time also the GSEC for RCA. So it is, I can, you know, correlate when you talk in terms of being the music secretary or somebody else being the house secretary and so on and so forth, so which really means that none of us were studying, you know, all we were focusing on was how to spend <laughs> time on that. <laughs> but lovely. Please give a big round of applause to Ranjita. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Great seeing you again. And from the U.S. East Coast, we go across to San Francisco on the West Coast and we talk to whom else? Well, let us check first. Shobna, have you changed your job in the last five minutes? No, I'm still still at the same job. It's only been a week. <laughs> Please give a big round of applause to Shobna. Shobna, after IIT Delhi or after some point in time, did her MBA from um, Chicago Boot Business School. And, you know, across the board, you find, you know, some of the trends which are coming out from the IIT in the Invariably, people tend to marry, you know, other IITians, especially the female population. Um, some of them, you know, hang up their boots after a certain point of time. Some, but some of them keep changing jobs quite a few times and so on and so forth. 
Shodhna, tell us about your journey and tell us about your jobs. What all have you been doing? Have you been in the Bay Area all along? Yeah. Happy to share. First of all, thanks Pradeep for having uh, me here. Great to be here and uh, to meet the rest of the group. Uh, as Anshul mentioned, I've changed a lot of jobs. So, you know, I'll go over my career journey in a bit. So I graduated from IIT in 2002. And after graduating, moved to the US to California to pursue a master's in geomechanics at Stanford. So I was there for two years in the Bay Area. So that's when I moved to the Bay Area so almost 20 years ago. And after Stanford, I worked at an engineering consulting company called URS Corporation, which is an engineering uh, design firm. And I focused on earthquake engineering. That was my specialization. So I did Man. pursue... Um, I'm getting shocked hearing, hearing about your engineering. I didn't know all the... <laughs> okay, then that after that... I did that for a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, and in my third year at uh, URS, I started managing projects, leading projects, also getting involved in business development activities for new projects. And that's when I started enjoying the business aspects of projects a lot more than the technical aspects and wanted to learn and get a formal education in business strategy uh, and management. And to bridge that gap, I went to business school. So I moved to Chicago for two years from 2009 to 2011. Uh, to join Chicago Booth and pursue my MBA. That is the only time I've uh, basically lived outside the Bay Area. So I moved to Chicago for two years and then moved back to California in 2011 uh, because my husband was in, uh, you know, still in the Bay Area. And I joined uh, McKinsey uh, as a consultant uh, post uh, MBA. Did that for a few years, got the strategy training and my consulting toolkit, left as an engagement manager to join eBay uh, as part of their corporate strategy team. I did that for a little bit, and that's when LinkedIn reached out uh, with the opportunity to join their business operations group. So six years ago, I joined LinkedIn, and uh, I was there for six and a half years. So you know, I, I don't change jobs every five minutes. <laughs> I you know, tend to stay long at companies as well. Uh, and my most recent role at LinkedIn was leading the BizOps team for their advertising business. So that I did until last week. And this week I started at a health tech startup called Hinge Health to lead their uh, strategy and operations team. So that's been my journey. A lot of different roles, a lot of different companies, but the constant theme has been, uh, you know, to continue to invest in learning and growth. And that's sort of driven, you know, some of the decisions I've made so far. So tell me, whichever companies that you've gone to, do you take the geothermal shocks along with you? No, I left that quite a few years ago. Uh, so yeah, I don't cause earthquakes anymore. <laughs> and the other question is that what do you do when it's minus 35 degrees in Chicago? Were you actually studying? I was. And actually, you know, given that I've only stayed uh, you know, outside the Bay Area for two years, I actually quite enjoyed the seasons in Chicago. So I enjoyed the snowfall, I enjoyed the winters in Chicago because again, I don't I don't get to experience that on a day-to-day -day basis. So I quite enjoyed that. So were you married at that time when you were doing your MBA? Yes. So an interesting fact, I got married three days before I moved to Chicago. Uh, so I got married in the Bay Area and then moved to Chicago. So for the first two years, had a long distance marriage with my husband. And then, as I said earlier, as soon as I completed my MBA, moved back uh, so it looks like it looks like that when you decided to go for MBA, your husband said, "Oh man!" But that time your fiance said, "You know, man, just marry her, otherwise she'll she'll go move off." You know, but <laughs> jokes apart, jokes apart. Um, look, I was uh, looking up uh, Hinge. It it seems to have got three hundred million dollars worth of funding. Is that correct? What does Hinge do? So uh, it's a digital uh, health tech company that operates in the musculoskeletal space. So their core sort of product is around uh, solving uh, chronic back and joint pain. That's what they focus on. And their value proposition is they provide this care in an online digital format. So you can get the care you need uh, you know, from the comfort of your home by following their um, online um, therapy as well as 
coaching sessions, physical therapy sessions and so on. And on a serious note, they seem to be having a leadership position in the area that they're operating. Is that right? That's correct. Oh, that's very interesting. And uh, uh, look, uh, now the thing is that there is so much to ask you that I'll run out of questions, you know. <laughs> so, but uh, uh, on, on another aspect is when you keep changing jobs, does your whole husband follow you or how does that work out, you know? No, so um, all the job changes, except for the two years I was in Chicago, have been in California. So, you know, that's our base and we are based out of Bay Area, not uh, moving. Uh, our kids go to school here, so we're pretty much settled here. And, uh, you know, I've looked for opportunities within the area. So that is the geographic uh, sort of constraint. Uh, so, that, you know, you know, in, in the, like I say, in the good old days, I used to be in the Bay Area once in four months, you know either speaking at San Francisco I mean, conferences, but also because my wife, sister uh, and her family live in, um, uh, in the Bay Area. So it was absolutely uh, wonderful to have this chat with you and to know that how the batch of 1999 to 2002, not exactly the batch, but the snapshot, how they have been creating waves in whatever area they've gone in. So. And last but not the least is, what value proposition would you look forward to in GCC? Would it be professional networking? Would, yeah, over to you. Thanks, Pradeep. Uh, so for me, you know, IIT is where my career journey started. So I owe a lot of my sort of career trajectory to uh, the experiences I've had at IIT. So there's obviously that emotional connect and the desire to, you know, pay forward, give back. But besides paying forward, there's also what I'm interested in is reverse mentoring. So interacting with the current, uh, you know, group or actually folks who graduated after I did to learn how their experience was, how the current experience of current students is, what the work environment is right now uh, and school environment. So it's a lot of like reverse mentoring as well. I don't get to interact as much with given that I don't live um, in Delhi anymore. So a lot of it is about reverse mentoring and also, you know, staying connected to the place I grew up uh, in as well as went to school um, and, you know, stay in touch with uh, the group and the team there. Fabulous. And I suppose the only other question that I have is that the video that I circulated today was life in Kailash something like that during your years? I haven't looked at that video. I will and uh, will let you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause to Shobhnaitl. Absolutely wonderful uh, to talk to her like to everybody else. And let's move on to the last but not the least, Aditi, who's been not only parachuting herself from IIT Delhi like Anshul to Deloitte but also gets involved into a whole lot of social activities in in and around what communities I don't know but let's give a round of applause to her and let's move across to Aditi. Aditi how are you? I'm good Pradeep thank you so much for for having me here I really appreciate it and it's been so awesome connecting um, with everybody here especially my Dear, dear Kalashites um, and everybody else, just such a joy to see you all. So, just is Anchal your soulmate? <laughs> you know, uh, might as well be. <laughs> I actually wasn't <laughs> kidding when I said. I didn't. I didn't want to put I you didn't... on. I didn't want to put you on a spot, but I, then I thought, why not? You know? <laughs> hey, uh, and, and you're not very far off. I mean, it's amazing how we go back to middle school and literally the journey that we've had is so, so similar. In fact, up until a few months ago, we were considering, I'm like, she might even have, um, you know, been in the same place as me. Uh, so it's, it's been but fascinating. But by the, by the just, same uh, token, even her seat would be your soulmate because both of you have been chief of staff. You know, and uh, you know, I was just listening through and it's actually, uh, it's good to go last because I see snippets of me in literally everybody. So it's, I don't know what it is. I don't know if we're cut out with the same template or I don't know what it is, but there's just so much similarity with Anshal. It's been the entire journey with Harpreet that's, you know, similar roles and, um, you know, Ranjita talked about women and, and focus on that. That's where my heart is. 
um, with Shobhana, you know, uh, there's a ton of things, but Bay Area being one, I mean, I'm like, a, you know, once in Bay Area, uh, I don't think I'm going to live anywhere else so, now. But uh, yeah, tell, us, so many tell us about your journey and what all have you been doing post? And, and first of all, have you seen the video or not? The Kailash video. So, yeah, I, I actually was going to comment on that. I did see it. It was uh, so um, awesome to see that there are still so many similarities. But, I mean, I think the biggest difference I saw was just the number of girls. Yeah. Like, uh, we were 13 in our batch. I think I saw in your message there was one in the first batch and so on and so forth. So, just seeing so many girls and uh, all of that was just a lot of fun. Uh, but the biggest similarity was, I mean, we, I remember similar times from our, um, our years back then. I remember uh, when one of our batchmates got, got the um, first PC in our batch, we all got together in a room and uh, Dil Se used to be a famous song at that time from one of the, one of the movies. And we were all dancing on Dil Se in her room so that, you know, some of the visuals from that video just were like a flashback for me. It was just, thank you for sharing. So tell me about your journey. What happened yeah. after you so, moved to um, US? Yeah, so uh, I was um, uh, I was a part of the second batch of uh, Deloitte recruits directly from campus. Um, so my journey, the fascinating part of it began when we were on the Air India flight over because literally all the 45 people on the plane were Deloitte recruits. <laughs> and that was <laughs> really? All the on that plane. <laughs> so, did, so did Deloitte get, did, did they get uh, uh, bulk discount on the tickets? I, I'm sure they did. Uh, but I mean, uh, you know, jokes apart, that was the beginning of such a fascinating journey. I was going straight from college for work, um, going to a new country. That was my first time in the US, going to a place where I didn't know anybody. Um, I mean, it was just uh, really a very, very um, life-changing experience, right? And um, again, where I relate to Harpreet is, she said, you know, I'll first join for a couple of years, do consulting, and then go on, do something else. That was the exact mindset I had. I was like, you know, okay, let's try this for two years, and then, you know, we'll do an MBA, we'll go into investment banking, and we'll do this and that and the other. And, uh, you know, 21 years later, <laughs> last year, I was like, hmm, maybe I should do something different. Um, so, yeah, I, I stayed with Deloitte for almost 21 years and uh, last year with the pandemic, um, I really sort of, you know, asked myself, is this, wanna, is this what I want to do for the next 20 years and just retire or do I want to do something different? So I, 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 I tell you what, and, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, see, I know that you write. So why don't you spend the rest of your life being on the editorial board for GCC? I, um, yeah, I am more than happy to do that, Pradeep. Uh, thank you for, for um, entrusting me <laughs> with that, uh, with that role. I'm more than happy to do that. In fact, um, I am working on a, um, on a book, which it's, it's on my bucket list. It's on the top of my bucket list. If I'm able to publish that book in my lifetime, um, I would have considered uh, myself successful and it has nothing to do with technology or consulting it's it's all about life and um yeah it's it's about my my learnings from my parents i lost both of them at an so early I, age. I i i know that you also involve yourself in cultural activities and kind of a thing so are you what are you a social butterfly or are you kind of genuinely involved in <laughs> activities social activities and cultural activities I don't know about being a butterfly, Pradeep, but uh, I do. Uh, I do think I went into the right field because people is what I um, thrive on. Like I love thriving on on my network, the people I know. It's the most important aspect of anything I do is people, right? So I love being connected socially and. Um, you know, one of the things that I've done in the Bay Area is uh, I've been very involved in something we call the Diwali Dhamaka. It happens every year. It's like a cultural program uh, where we, you know, do skits and stuff like that. And when we do, when we prepare for that skit for the, for, you know, for two, three months, I almost feel like I've been transported back into IIT days. You know, I remember the seminar hall and the convo hall and all the events we used to do there. Um, it almost brings me back um, to those days. So, yeah, I'd love staying involved um, in, you know, socially and 
Um, I don't know if I mentioned already, but my husband actually was also a BRCAG sec um, back in IIT. We were the same batch. He was the dramatic secretary. So drama runs in our family. So is it also drama at home? Yeah, lots of drama at home. I, well, you know, I have a 14-year-old boy and I have an 11-year-old boy. So there, uh, yeah, there's no dearth of drama at all. <laughs> Love it. Now, I'm looking forward to you creating the same dhamaka with Jesus. You know, you see, the thing is that, you know, how your body language reflects the personality that you are. You know, and can make out that you are a lively person. You enjoy, you know, uh, you are a people's person, you know, whatever you call it kind of a thing. You know, it, it's fabulous to, you know, uh, you know, interact with you. And on the same note that I also want to, you know, kind of tell the community today that we have just uh, uh, last week only kick started uh, another special interest group which is focused on supply chain this goes you know kind of getting each member of gcc forming a mm, community by themselves and i've got manmohan who was uh, 19 if i remember correctly nine, either 1984 or 85 uh, btech from iit delhi he lives in london and he's been also recognized as 84 84 and and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you see this is what happens when you come to my age you know i mean a year here or there it doesn't matter you know kind of a thing you know mm. so but uh, manmohan uh, by the way has also been recognized as among the top 10 uh, you know, academic leaders in supply chain. So in a chat with him last week, I asked him that what kind of community would you like to build, you know, and uh, supply chain with the technology came straight to his mind. So, and, and as we go down the process of creating these communities, it is, you know, kind of getting more and more people into the fold. Likewise, you know, we've got uh, Anil Brahm, who's based in Montreal in Canada, who, who's kind of, you know, single-handedly along with Neeraj, so not single-handedly, but now along with Neeraj, you know, doing the newsletter for GCC, which really picks up on, you know, the emotional connect. But looking at the value proposition, we've already kind of kick-started with Naimi Bantia, who is based in Vancouver and British Columbia, and he's a very uh, lovely figure and a very senior academician <coughs> in the University of British Columbia. He's going to be kick-starting, uh, you know, another part of the newsletter, which is going to be focused on thought leadership, open ed, and those kind of stuff. You know. So there is tons of stuff, you know, which is happening. But going back to, because we have not even given a big round of applause to Aditi as yet, but I have to ask you one more question, Aditi. And this is to the value sure. proposition. What value proposition would you look forward to in GCC? Yeah, so I mean, the topmost, um, I think you can probably <laughs> guess by now is, is the emotional connect again. I'm, you know, when I when I see IITNs, when I see Kalasha, it's, um, you know, there's that instant connection, even if we haven't been in touch for over a decade or two decades or whatever it might be, I just feel that instant connect. So the, the social, the emotional part of it is big. Um, but I also want to echo what Shobhana said around mentoring and what um, Harpreet said around mentoring as well. And I think that's also a common theme, right? I mean, we're always learning. We're always, um, we always have nuggets to, you know, um, help somebody else out. And we're, again, like I said, um, always learning from everybody around us. So I would love to, you know, um, connect into this network. And um, in fact, one thing, if I may plug in, I am just kicking off something called um, Project Kiran. Um, it's uh, for women in, um, in the US right now, we're starting with the US and maybe um, in India as well, for young college professionals, um, especially women that are starting out their journey, uh, we're creating a forum for them to, um, to just listen to other women who have been through the journey, just some life lessons and some professional lessons. So we're kicking that off and I would love to plug into this uh, network to, you know, give back um, in a way. Um, so you so know, that is so, that is so nice to hear because, you know, I, we, I talked about in square just now, you know, as part of that, there is a, because that in square has three focus areas. One is on the new normal, Second is on innovation, how all of us, both at the individual and organization level, are being required to adapt to low probability, high impact events, you know, and innovate. And the third is 
inclusion. So we already have kicked off a group which currently has curtain focus areas and it's got a lot of members from UK as well as from India. And I think it would be great to plug you into that network and you know and, and take the thing across number of dimensions. You know. And going back to like Hasbreet, just start with the lateral mind and you know go into as many directions as we can. So it is absolutely fabulous, but let me tell you, all of you girls, you are not the only one. There is one more person that I am also in touch with, whom all of you would know. And her name is Anjali Obro in Spain. And again, somebody who Anjali has introduced to me. And she is also will be coming into GCC in one of the future this thing, but she's also getting involved into the ESG side, uh, the special interest group that we are talking about. So, girls, absolutely, first of all, please give a big round of applause to Aditi. Delighted. And with this, I hand it back to Anshul to sum up. It has been an absolutely wonderful session and make no mistakes you have made the mistake of you know coming into a gcc session so gcc has a lot of stickiness you can't just walk away very easily but more on that later on so back to you Anshul. Thanks, Pradeep. Um, you know, before I kind of start summarizing, I just want to comment on a you know side discussion we are having on chat. Pradeep, you called us girls, and I think uh, girls has a connotation nowadays. You know, it feels a little bit like uh, you know uh, kind of not so feminist. So I was just commenting oh. on that. That uh, <laughs> you know, th there is some. Um, I, you know, I want to acknowledge that that indeed is the case. And uh, when you say girls, you know, sometimes I look back on my shoulders. I look, is he talking about me? But then I also realize we have people from many different batches here right you know you, you as and as you rightly mentioned this is also bridging together different generations in a sense right so bringing up those points talking about this is perfectly valid um but you know um i just kind of want to acknowledge that uh uh, uh you know that um, it's an important point that uh, you know and thanks so sunil for bringing it up um so going back to kind of the session today, uh, you know, for me, it brought about some really strong themes of camaraderie from Kailash days. You know, we were a very strong sense of, had a strong sense of community being such a small batch. And I think it still comes through 20 years later. Um, and uh, what's interesting to see is that uh, there are so many similarities, as Aditi mentioned, uh, in our paths, uh, you know, especially when it comes to juggling jobs, higher education, in some cases, kids. Uh, we have those similarities, but there's also some unique uh, snippets, right, that uh, each of us kind of uh, have uh, that has been interesting to hear about, whether it's uh, Harpreet exploring yoga after 20 years, or Ranjita, you know, with her um, experiences of entrepreneurship and partnering with community. So it's wonderful to hear that. Um, so, uh, and Aditi, thank you for sharing, uh, you know, about your ideas about your book and, you know, some of the, you know, ways in which, uh, uh, you know, the kind of inspirations behind that. I personally am really looking forward to it and I hope you publish it. Um, it's it's going to be, uh, you know, completely uh, awesome if, uh, you know, if, uh, if, if we get to see that. So again, thank you for, uh, um, you know, getting us all together, Pradeep, and giving us the opportunity to reconnect with each other as well as with the broader community. Thank you so much. And when you talked about girls, it also reminded me that number of times people call me uncle, you know, and I look over my shoulder as if they are speaking to somebody. Whom are they talking to? You know, kind of stuff. <laughs> but that's what it is, you know. So, uh, look, ladies and gentlemen, we had an absolutely delightful session today. And I can assure you that we have already have bookings up to end October. And the pipeline is you have been lucky that you could be positioned so quickly as the GCC is exploding and the waiting time is increasing. But jokes apart, um, I'm looking forward to having small communities being driven by each one of you in your own passion area. As you know, I always, I mentor, like all of you, I mentor so many people and always tell people to find their passion and follow their passion. But of course, in the case of younger people, the question is who pays the bills when you follow your passion? That is not applicable to 
the group that I'm talking about today. You know. <laughs> so with that, you know, have a lovely morning, evening, afternoon, night or whatever it is you're in your part of the way. Enjoy your morning cup of tea, evening glass of wine or afternoon lassi. Whether it is sweet or salted, I leave it to you. Take care, bow for now. And